Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Drama Surgery Podcast. In this episode, I continue on my review of Marry My Husband. This week saw the end of this drama with episodes 15 and 16 airing and we have now reached the conclusion of the drama. Which is good because I feel like I was done with this drama um, at episode 10. <laughs> so I'm glad it's over for one. Um, and so in this last two episodes, we saw our villains punished and we saw our leads get their happy ending the way it should be um unfortunately for me i feel like the drama made me a fan of the villain um more than (laughs) the leads which is unfortunate and i i guess it's not really anything to do with the leads or how they act or anything i just think that um the character of jung soomin is just so interesting that she overshadowed everybody else and so the writers we are really good at you know writing a really really good villain um and song Ayin was really really good at just portraying one so generally i just want to first start with the strong points of this drama and then i'll move on to the weak points and then finally i'll talk about um what i kind of wish would come out of this drama because honestly i feel like i'm going to miss jung Sumin so much and so team four ad is going to come on at the end of this episode so stay tuned for that but yeah, to start, the strong points of this drama, I mean, when I was watching the first couple of episodes, um, it was really, really good. I was really, really enjoying it, mainly because it was very interesting for me to see the lead, Kang Ji Won, kind of redo our life and, you know, and grow to be a stronger person. That was, I feel like, the whole point of the first part of this drama and I enjoyed seeing that journey. And so it was very, very interesting just to watch her grow as a character and as a person. Another strong point for me in this drama was the numerous side characters, right? So we have Yang Juran and Yu Yeon who are like the friends of our female lead. We had Secretary Lee, we had the grandpa and so all these characters, you know, were very interesting and I think dynamic in their own ways, right? And I think for me that was very good to see um they were very entertaining and they just made the drama fun for me right then another strong part of this drama and i will even say like maybe the strongest point in this drama is the character of the villains Park Min Wan and Jung Soo Min and i will even go as far as to say that the strongest point in this drama the person that had carried this drama at least for me was Jung Soo Min closely followed by Park Min Wan so i think that these three things were really excellently done in this drama Kang Ji Won's reinvention of herself the side characters and the villains you know they were a combo that could not be beat in the first half right and i really enjoyed just watching them but that's about it <laughs> for strong points like i guess you go back and see like my previous episode reviews and kind of hear what i liked about the drama at those points uh, but honestly now i can barely think of good things about the drama because i feel like the bad things overshadow and i know some people are going to be like i'm being a Debbie downer and it wasn't as bad as i'm making it but for me i feel like it was really really bad like it was like character suicide plot destruction and just utter nonsense that was riddled with the second part of this drama right and that is where really the weak points of this drama start to shine I think one of the biggest weak points in this drama is the character of the male lead. For some reason, I just don't like the male lead character. It's weird because in the first half, I kind of liked him. But I don't know, there's just something about Yu ji that seemed very passive. And I mentioned this in my previous episode. He seemed very passive. He seemed like he had the weight of the world on his shoulder. He wasn't doing anything. He was really there to just be the romantic interest of the female lead. So very, very flat in a way that I feel like the other characters did not give me that vibe, right? Or the other characters kind of looked like they had hobbies. They had things that they enjoyed doing that wasn't just about the plot of the drama that they were there for whereas i feel like the male lead was only there literally because the female lead's father actually sends him back in time for this one purpose so maybe it makes sense that his only existence is to be there for the female lead but for me yujiok was not a very dynamic male lead that was the first issue the second point that i think this drama feels at is keeping the momentum on kang jimon's character and I wish to kind of fix things herself. I read a comment on my drama list where someone was like, Kang Jiwon is really no match for Jung Soo Min. What I liked about the first half of this drama was that Kang Jiwon was willing to work and put in the effort to kind of defeat Jung Soo Min. 
But I felt like at some point, she started to rely on Yuji Yuk too much, which is contrary to what she said in the beginning, where she's like, she wants to do this on her own and she doesn't want his help. I felt like at some point, he became her only shield and without him, she would not have had a chance. Right, and that kind of makes her a very a weaker character than Jung Soo Min because, let's be honest, if we are being completely honest, the idea of the Che Ball is kind of a nuclear option in the sense of that it's like that trump card that you can win against. It's that Joker, right? Is that card that like will always win over anybody because again, who can beat a Che Ball? So if it was just playing Kang Ji Won versus Jung Soo Min, even though she was reborn, I feel like. <laughs> Jung Soo Min will still have had one over her. Jung Soo Min is just that crafty, right? In the sense that like Kang Ji Won is not that kind of person. And I feel like that is a weakness in itself and makes her seem kind of like a damsel in distress, which maybe is okay to find that she's like that. But there is that aspect of me that I'm like, if I'm being honest, they are not on the same level. Jung Soo Min is just, she's on a different plane and <laughs> people that listen to this are going to be like you sound like a Jung Sumi fan that's because I am <laughs> I am a huge huge fan of her in the way that I feel like I was not a fan of the bully in the glory like I wanted the bully in the glory to pay she was kind of a one-dimensional villain whereas Jung Sumi has this backstory that makes that interesting but we'll talk about Jung Sumi later um so yeah, that's one thing that I would say having Yuji Ok in Kang Jiwon's life was kind of a cheat that I guess that's why the father sent him back in time, right? But I, at some point, it started to be the weak point, like she couldn't do anything without him and I didn't like that as much. Then the next weak point about this drama, and I know for a lot of people this is the same issue they had, is the character of Oyura. She was the most pointless character I have ever seen. <laughs> Um, Boa that acts Oyura is also not a fantastic actress, right? She's very cartoonish in the way she acts, unfortunately. And given that we've seen what good acting is like in like Song Anyun, having a character like Oyura come in, right, you just mess up everything because Jung Sumi was just so much more interesting, right? And so Her character, her actions were not making sense in any way. And I feel like she did not add anything to the plot. I feel like the only reason why they brought her in, and if you've not watched the last two episodes, you should click off now because I'm about to spoil things. I feel like the only reason why they brought her in was to die in Yuji Ok's place. But I feel like they could have done that, executed that passing of the fate in another way. She didn't need to be the one to take that faith but i feel like they wanted her to be the one and so they brought her in for that i don't know if that's how it is in the novel and maybe that's what they decided to follow but i've heard that the webtoon is not like that and honestly i feel like they should have followed the webtoon on that point um because she wasn't useful in any way right for someone that claimed that everyone was beneath her she was sleeping with pac one and like just doing stupid shit that i feel like a normal smarter person would not have been doing and she did not add anything to the story at least for me and honestly she changed the plot of the second half into a soap opera into a mac jang drama and it was not necessary and so she was i think her introduction was the weakest point in this drama the minute she came on screen the writing and everything just went into the toilet like it was so bad and i think that's really the part that pisses me off the most because without her i feel like this story would have been so much much better but yeah moving on to the other point that is i think kind of tying into the third point i mentioned about oyura is that because of her existence and the plot that they gave to match her character they ended up taking away from other plots that could have been for example the story between Secretary Lee and Yang Juran. The story between Bekuno and Yui Yon, right? Like, I had very good feelings towards Secretary Lee and Yang Juran because just the two actors have this chemistry. They are older actors and they just, you know, they had a better chemistry on screen. Whereas, like, I feel like I wasn't as tied to Bekuno and Yui Yon because they didn't show us enough of them for me to even feel a like real connection between them um so there wasn't that chemistry there wasn't that build for me that i'll be like oh actually i want to see more of them i wish they had done that instead of giving plots to oyura and so that's another 
way in which the story fails, right? It fails the characters that really should have been the focal point of the second half, right? And instead, you know, we get the shenanigans <laughs> with Oyura. It really became Oyura's story, right? And the title was Marry My Fiancé. <laughs> that was the plot of our own story so yeah that was i think the part of this drama that really failed now that i've gotten that out of the way i also want to talk about the character of jung Min and just how things ended for her because again she is the most interesting part of this drama she is the mvp of this drama and she is for me the most interesting right the most compelling so at the end, we find her uh, in prison and <laughs> my guesses are correct because I mentioned previously that she obviously is dealing with some kind of mental illness and they really show that, you know, when she finally finds out that Kanji Won, this her bestie, is marrying a Chewa guy, you know, she loses her mind and she's like, no, Kanji Won cannot be happy without me. So Jung Su Min has, you know, come a long way <laughs> from just stealing boyfriends to, you know, being in jail. I think the most memorable part of this last two episodes for me was the fight scene between her and Park Mi Wan that ends up in Park Mi Wan's death. <laughs> it's very funny because I, I found it very funny how she kept saying that he was shooting blanks <laughs> and it was important. Like the way she she was just like goading him and just insulting him was like a chest kiss. It was so well done and it was like the funniest part. Even though they were like fighting and it was a high tension but the two actors are just so good that yeah, like I was so entertained, right? But I really like that in that scene, you know, she's just so industrious. Because I expected her to die in that scene, honestly. But I'm glad they kept her alive because if she had died, <laughs> I would have stopped watching immediately. Even if it was just one episode left, I would have stopped watching instantly. Because the moment where she, like, manages to push back Man and kills him, right? Like, am I the only one that was, like, clapping for her? <laughs> like... It was so good because, I mean, pac man is a different kind of trash, right? I mean, someone that is able to, like, think of killing someone so quickly, right? Without any thought, remorse of, like, oh, this person is my wife, this person was my ex fiance, it's just like that. It was a different kind of trash in that I feel like jong Sumin had this hesitation about killing Kang ji Won, right? It means that, honestly, if... Park Mi-won wasn't there. Jung Sumi might not have resulted into what she resulted into. Another scene that was really interesting to me was the scene where they finally had the final face off, right? It wasn't as climactic as I would have wanted it to be. You know, I wish there was more tussle, more, you know, just emotions involved. But it was still pretty good. It's a shame because, like I mentioned in my last episode review of this drama, Jung Sumi has had a lot of chances to turn her life around. Be it that when she was younger, she did not have to resort in what she resulted into, you know, manipulating Kang Ji-won, bullying her, you know, all those things. Because again, she's beautiful, she's smart, she is someone that would survive the worst corporate job out there and come out on top, right? She's that kind of character. The same thing happens when she kills Park Min Wan. Honestly, she could have stayed behind and just claimed self-defense because genuinely it was self-defense, right? Like, Park Min Wan wanted to kill her and she could have proven it was self-defense. Like, he stole all her money and stuff like that and had insurance in her name. And so he, she could have proved that that's what he wanted to do, kill her. But instead... Because of that hatred, that tie, that I don't know if it's in printing, <laughs> that you can even call it at this point, on Kang Ji Won, she felt the need to still go and do that final act of trying to kill Kang Ji Won. Because to her, that is the ultimate. That is really a god. In the way I feel like, again, going back to the glory, Song Ego's character, you know, made kind of a god out of the villain that bullied her. That's kind of the reverse here, right? In that the villain has made a god out of the female lead. And it's a shame that that's how she ends up, right? In jail and still playing the victim to the very end. Now, guys, this is where the tinfoil art comes on, right? Like, I was thinking about this yesterday. Wouldn't it be interesting if we had a season two or just some sort of like sequel to Marry My Husband? where we see Jung Sumin being released from prison, probably on like good behavior or because, you know, she's 
uh, mentally ill and like stuff like that right and she kind of has this redemption arc like anyone getting that same like <laughs> that same vision just imagine guys like a sequel to marry my husband it will be just tied to jung Sumin, right and here's the synopsis guys it's basically jung Sumin, newly released from prison has to navigate the world as an ex-convict while dealing with the trauma and actions of her past <sighs> i mean like I could be a screenwriter at this point. <laughs> that is a fantastic drama, right? Like, you guys, can you imagine how good that drama would be? Because you, you'd imagine that in that drama, right, Jung Sumi could, like, move to a small town and, you know, everybody knows she's an ex-convict but she doesn't care because she's Jung Sumi and she's a bad bitch and also kind of crazy, right? And she kind of figures things out. It's still, obviously, an anti-hero, because she can never be like that Mary Sue kind of character like Kang Chi one, right? But imagine she's like that anti-hero. She's like telling kids off and, you know, insulting people. But like she grows to have a good heart, right? And grows to kind of heal and, you know, deal with everything that she's done. You know, I feel like it's a story. Because I, I really want to see more of Song Gang Yun at this point. And I want to see her play this character, right? She could even be like a femme fatale. Anybody know the drama Ripley? If you know that drama, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like a character that, because again, she has that vibe to her that is just very charismatic and, you know, very interesting. So I feel like it's a story, right? And I want to see that story. I know it will never happen. And again, Team for Art is on, but I feel like it would be such a good idea. But yeah, that was what I was thinking about yesterday when I finished the drama. I was like, oh, I want to see more of her. Like, and she's crying in the final scene. Like, I want redemption for her, right? Because definitely her killing of Park Min-wan can still be considered self-defense, right? Um, and what else has she really done, guys? Let's be honest. <laughs> I am literally the worst person because I am basically advocating for an abusive person. But I don't know, it's just something about her that's very interesting. So yeah, she stole Kang Ji Won's husband. And obviously, like, she's a terrible person and all that thing, right? But let's be honest, even in the first life, it wasn't like she was the one that killed Kang Ji Won. That was actually Pak Min Won, right? So again, I feel like there's more to be said about her. There's a story there, really, if the writers knew what they were doing, since they have the rights they can definitely write a story about this girl because oh my god she's just so interesting to me and i would love to see more story about her. it doesn't have to be long yes it can be like eight episodes long right like netflix kind of level of like just a short drama and it will literally tell the story well but i know it's never gonna happen (laughs) and i am it's a it's wishful thinking i know yeah anyway same for at off that's really it for my review of my my husband i will say i want to give this drama a seven it climbs up to a seven because of characters like jung sumin and just how well a character was portrayed and it is brought down to a seven because of the character of oyura unfortunately and just how the plot messes up at the second half so yeah, that's really it for this drama. I'm glad it's over. I can move on to other dramas um, because there's so many dramas that have come out in the meantime that I want to cover. Um, so yeah, that's really it for My My Husband. It's been a journey um, from highs to a huge low and I am happy for anybody that actually likes this drama to the end because there are people like that, that, you know, this drama was a 10 over 10 for them. But for me, unfortunately, it has to go down to a 7. Um for those reasons i just i can't stand when people mess up the second half of dramas that are easily easily avoidable so yeah that's really it for my review of my my husband thank you guys so much for listening have a nice day bye